Hi guys, today's video is going to be all about folic acid, folate and the difference between the two. So I've suspected for the longest time that I'm deficient in B vitamins because I was on the birth control pill for 10 years and the birth control pill is known to deplete B vitamins. So I've been trying to find a B complex that actually works for the longest time and none of them ever works. So I literally spent two years trying out all kinds of supplements from different brands, trying to find something that works. And just to illustrate that point, just look what I've tried in my life. So first of all, I started from regular mainstream supplements and I tried coenzyme B complex from now. No, actually, no, I'm lying. First of all, I tried just a very simple, non um B complex from Solgar and that caused me major acne, so I had to stop. And at that time, I wasn't sure there was that B complex, but now I do know. And then next, I decided to get the coenzyme B complex from now because coenzyme is supposed to be you know, more natural, more uh, better absorbed form, yet it still causes the same problems. And then I tried True Balance multivitamins from now, again, the same problem. And then I got also, quite recently, the Blood Builder from Mega Foods, and this is food based iron supplement with folate which turns out is derived from folic acid, so again I ran into troubles. And then another thing that also causes troubles is Floridex tablets. So you know that I've had loads of success with Floridex liquid because it doesn't have any folic acid, but Floridex tablets have lots of folic acid, so definitely stay away from that. If you are looking for an iron supplement, I don't recommend this at all. So one thing in common between all of these supplements is that they all contain synthetic folic acid, which might be okay for a lot of people, but up to 40 to 50% of people in the world have a certain genetic mutation, which means that they're not able to convert folic acid into the usable active form of folate, and then they run into a lot of troubles. As I was trying all these different supplements with B vitamins, I kept running into the same symptoms again, again, and again, and I literally tried it six times, and they were identical every single time, but somehow it still took me exactly one year to connect all the dots and find out what the culprit was. I was getting, first of all, really bad acne. I generally have quite clear skin, but B-complex vitamins always gave me these crazy, crazy acne outbreaks and really oily skin and quite irritated and red skin, which is totally not like me. And then I was also getting depressed and really fatigued and I had muscle pains and joint pains. My knee joint would be really weird. My elbow and uh, wrist would get really painful and kind of weak, it would be difficult to control my fingers. I know that sounds crazy, but it happened to me six times in exactly the same way. So I was sure I wasn't imagining it. And then I also felt nauseous. Um, I had diarrhea sometimes, not every time. It was totally ruining my digestion every time. I had trouble sleeping, I had palpitations, I had uh, anxiety, so really not fun. And what I found out after all of these trials is that all of this was caused by some synthetic folic acid that my body just wasn't able to convert into the usable folic, into usable folate because I suspect I have the genetic mutation called MTHFR, which is basically responsible for converting folic acid into methylfolate, which is the form that the body can use. So as I said at the beginning of the video, 40 to 50% of people in the world have this mutation and you can either have just one of the genes mutated or both of them because you got them from both parents and depending on that, your conversion will be more impaired or less impaired. So I don't know which one I am yet. I'll definitely do my test very, very soon. But I surely know that I have troubles with folic acid, so I just stick to the active version to help my body. So what happens when somebody is unable to convert folic acid into folate, um, yet they take supplements with folic acid in them? Well, the folic acid actually accumulates in the blood to toxic levels, and when the person goes and has a test, a blood test for folic acid levels, often they will be quite high, often even above the limit, and the person will think, hmm, I already have too much folic acid, I don't need supplement supplements anymore. But in reality, it might just be all the folic acid that accumulated, but the body is still badly deficient in folate because it's unable to 
get to that folic acid. And folic acid accumulation like that can actually cause lots of troubles by itself, you know, from simple things like acne to cancer and, and heart troubles and depression. And it's a really serious thing. Another important thing to mention is that when somebody with that genetic mutation um, consumes folic acid, it actually reduces um, the person's ability to convert folic acid to methylfolate five by five times. So if you have the mutation and you consume something with folic acid, your ability is already impaired to make folate or methylfolate, but when you are consuming folic acid, your ability to get it is even more decreased. So it's so important for you to stay away from folic acid if you do have a mutation. As, as I said, half of us have it. The interesting thing is that when somebody with a genetic mutation consumes folic acid, instead of being helped by it, they actually start getting folate deficiency symptoms. And it's actually called paradoxical folate deficiency because you're kind of getting folate in, but you're not able to use it. And so you get these paradoxical symptoms, which are exactly the same as all the symptoms I was getting when consuming folic acid that I mentioned to you before. So things like acne and uh, dry skin and depression and fatigue and joint pains. These are all symptoms of folate deficiency. Unfortunately, all of the bakery uh, and flour based products in the US, including bread, are enriched with folic acid and even organic bread is often enriched with folic acid. So it's, that's really a huge thing. You know, if you have a mutation and you live in the US where you're continuously getting folic acid from food, it's a major problem. And I suspect that that's one of the reasons why so many Americans are unable to consume gluten or bread in the US. But when they go to Europe, they have no problems at all. That's because Fortunately, in Europe, flour is not enriched yet. So that's also one of the reasons why so many people think that they're gluten intolerant, but it might not be gluten, it might be fructose, or it might be folic acid in the flour. There's so many reasons why somebody could be reacting to bread. So if you live in the US or another country where flour is enriched with folic acid and you're having troubles with flour products, just try to go to your local health shop or check on Amazon and get flour that says precisely that is not enriched with folic acid and try it. Make some sourdough bread at home and see if it makes a difference. Even organic flour is often not enriched so you need to find flour that actually says non enriched and see if it makes a difference. I bet it will. And reading about folic acid and folate, I had another theory which to me personally makes a lot of sense. Tell me if you think so as well. So you know when, when women get pregnant they are told by the doctors to take prenatal vitamins and prenatal vitamins are basically the same things as normal multivitamins apart from two things. They have way more iron and they also have lots of folic acid, two or three times more than the usual multivitamins. Now, I told you already about the symptoms that you would get from consuming folic acid when you're not able to convert it to the usable form and then you know what happens to lots of pregnant women. They get nauseous, they get acne, they get depressed, and all of these symptoms are exactly the same as the paradoxical folate deficiency. So that makes me think, could it be that so many of these so-called pregnancy symptoms are not really the symptoms of pregnancy, but the symptoms of all that folic acid that they are stuffing into themselves? You know, that's really good food for thought in my opinion, because I personally have known so many women who felt perfectly fine in the pregnancy until they started taking prenatals and then they started having diarrhea and acne out of the blue and they just thought it was pregnancy symptoms kicking in but really it could have just been the prenatals. So if you are pregnant or about to get pregnant yourself, definitely try to get supplements that don't have folic acid. And talking about supplements, probably 99% of all the supplements in the market have folic acid in them, not the usable form you know, even prenatals and all the B complexes and multivitamins and all kinds of stress formulas, they all have folic acid and that's really sad. And then there will be some upstream brands that will often have a mixture of folic acid and methylphalate, which is still just as bad because the folic acid won't allow your body to absorb the methylphalate, which is really annoying. And that's exactly what happened to me with this country life causing B complex gaps. You know, I saw on the description it says, now with methylfolate, and I thought, oh great, it has methylfolate. 
But then when I looked at the ingredients, I realized that it actually had more folic acid than methylfolate. So it was just as rubbish as all the other cheaper ones I bought. So don't fall into the trap, always read the ingredients and make sure you know what you buy. So when you're trying to choose a proper B-complex or multivitamin or prenatal, make sure it contains something called 5-MTHF or methylfolate or metafolin. These are all the forms that you need. These are all um, properly active forms that are easy for your body to absorb. Some people also can't uh, absorb calcium folinate, which is also called folinic acid. I don't think I have a problem with it and a lot of prenatals, good prenatals contain it. It's probably a good thing, um, but you will need to experiment with it. I've looked on iHerb, on Amazon and everywhere looking for multivitamins and B-complexes with the, um, the active folate forms and with really good clean ingredients and I can only personally recommend two brands and that's Thorn and pure encapsulations. They're slightly more expensive, but they're really clean and they're really good quality. So I think it's worth paying more for something that is really important for your health. So I'm personally using Thorn prenatals now, and I know you're going to wonder, I'm not pregnant yet, but I am planning to start trying in maybe a month, not a month, sorry, what did I say? What's on my mind? In a year's time, I'm going to start trying, so I'm preparing already. So I'm using that and it's awesome and I'm also using um, simple basic B-complex from Thorn and it's also great and they both contain the active methylfolate which I'm super happy about. So definitely stay away from the, all the conventional supplements with folic acid, they're really bad for you. Don't fall for claims um, that they have methylfolate because as you know they can be lies and stay away from anything enriched like flour and bread. Definitely try to get your own unenriched flour and make your own bread is going to make a difference. And I guess this is all I wanted to share with you today. So right now go and check all your supplements and see if getting rid of folic acid is going to help you. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you find it helpful. I personally think it's extremely important to talk about and I really hope that you will go and check your supplements out um, because it's life changing, truly life changing for me. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.